I'm Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and welcome to the beautiful city of Malaga, Spain. I had never been here before a week ago, and I am absolutely 100% in love with this city. So what am I gonna share with you today? Everything that you need to be eating and trying and tasting while you're here in Malaga. If you're new to the channel, make sure to subscribe. That's the red button below. Ring that notification bell and give this video a thumbs up. If you're a subscriber, thank you so much for being back here. I really appreciate your support. So one of the things I have discovered about Malaga is this city is about food. First of all, you get up in the morning about 8.30 and you have a coffee and then you have your traditional tostada, which is the bread and then you put olive oil on it and then you put a tomato, not ketchup, but like a tomato sauce on top of it with your coffee. Around 2.30 is when they're actually having lunch. So if you're used to eating lunch at 12 o'clock, you're gonna be the only one there. They like to have their lunch at 2.30 in the afternoon. After that, of course, you've gotta have a little more coffee and you have to have an ice cream at that point or a pastry. There are so many ice cream shops and pastry shops and coffee shops. And then guess what? It's time to start having tapa and wine and beers. So here, what is typical to drink? Tinto de Verano, which is a red wine with ice and a little bit of uh, 7-Up or lemonade. To me, it's too sweet, but it is nice to drink when it is 100 and something degrees here in Malaga. Something else that they are making here, they are famous for their sweet wines. So be sure when you're at a restaurant and you're asking for a glass of wine, that you ask for a glass of wine that is seco or a glass of wine that is dry. A great white wine here is Verdejo. That is typically what you're gonna find for a nice dry white wine. If you're looking for a red wine, then ask for a Tempranillo or a Ribera de Duero. Most of the time here, I think you're gonna find a Ribera de Duero though. What's also delicious about here, because it is so hot, they serve Tempranillo slightly chilled. Like below a normal red wine temperature, it's actually cool and it is so flavorful. It's a really, Tempranillo is a super strong wine in and itself. So even when it's chilled just a little bit, it still has lots of flavor, lots of texture, and it is a great afternoon thing, especially if you don't want the sweetness of the Tinto de Verano. Here in Malaga, seafood reigns supreme. Of course, it's on the Mediterranean and a major port, so you're gonna find lots and lots of seafood. What's interesting though, is that they tend to fry all of their seafood. I don't quite understand that, but they are famous for their fried bocarones, anchovies, their fried sardines, their fried mixed fish, their fried calamari. They're also famous for frying croquettes, which are like cheese and jamon or, or ham on the inside and fried on the outside. They're sort of like a croquette. They're also famous for frying eggplant and covering that in a beautiful, beautiful local molasses. So fried food reigns supreme after seafood in Malaga. In addition to all of this fried goodness, there is another thing called tortilla de camarones. Of course, the typical Spanish tortilla is egg and potato in a slice that looks like a piece of pie. But here, a tortilla de camarone is the itty bitty little, itty bitty little shrimp in a sort of flat pancake style, deep fried deliciousness. Now, of course, I'm gluten free and I can't eat any of these things, but in some places you just have to ask. They do have gluten free items. Sometimes they have the little gluten-free bread that you get with jamon or the ham, Iberico. And you can also ask every once in a while, they do fry things in garbanzo bean flour, but you need to make sure if you're celiac or gluten-free, just be careful because they do fry lots of things in this town. Are you headed to Malaga and the Costa del Sol? Well, make sure to go to the description below and download my free packing guide. It has everything that a girl is gonna need for her trip to Malaga. So if you can't eat fried and you're not a fried person, then that's okay. There is plenty of seafood to be had in this town, grilled and also over an open fire. Yes, an open fire on the beach, which is pretty cool. So you can find camarones or shrimp, langostinos, langostines here. You can find about six or seven different types of shrimp, ranging from the little guys that go in their tortilla 
two bigger guys to white shrimp to red shrimp to a very special shrimp that is about 20 euros per shrimp more like lobster but it's something it's worth trying just once of course when you go to a restaurant just order one it's worth ordering one just to try and those 20 euro shrimp are called cara beneros i hope i said that correctly c-a-r-a-b-i-n-e-r-o-s the way to eat shrimp in this town is in a dish called gambas or camarones or langostinos al pipio, which is a take on the shrimp ajillo, which is the garlic shrimp that you find in the rest of Spain. Here, they add either chilies to it or they add a little bit of paprika. So there's a really nice spice to it. The trick is at the restaurant, your dish, it's a clay pot about this size. Your shrimp is in it, your garlic is in it, your paprika and your chilies are in it. When it comes to your table, it still needs to be boiling. If it's not boiling, send it back. It's not hot enough. Let's talk about the other fish that you can find here. You can find mussels, you can find clams, you can find fish, sardines grilled, you can find anchovies grilled, you can find little teeny redfish. I don't know what they're called. There is a redfish here called um, rosado it's either rosado rosada that is more sort of a a strong flavored red snapper that is also delicious and the place to eat all of this fresh grilled fish are the beach restaurants called chiringuitos there are amazing beach restaurants along the beach here in malaga and actually along the entire costa del sol these chiringuitos are the beach restaurants where you can go directly from the beach. The thing is, in this area, you've got to have a cover up and some shoes. You can't just show up in your bathing suit because a lot of them are really nice restaurants. What's really cool about these restaurants is they have an open fire outside the restaurant. They're typically in an old sort of rowing boat that is filled with sand. And then it has, on top of it, it has uh, wood in it and then what they do is they skewer the sardines called espetos when they're grilled like this or they skewer octopus or they skewer an entire fish and they just lean it up against the fire just like this that is definitely the way to eat your fish while you're here if you're enjoying these tips and ideas on Malaga, make sure to go to the description below and click join the tribe. That is my exclusive email list where I share additional information, ideas, hacks, and things to do in every place that I visit. Description below, join the tribe. I'm just touching on a few things to eat while you're here, give you a basis for what to do while you're in town. But the first thing that I suggest that you do is go to SpainFoodSherpas.com and go on one of their food tours. They have a food tour in a beach town about two miles away. They also have a daytime food tour here in the old town at Malaga. They also have an evening tapas tour. So SpainFoodSherpas.com that's where you need to go. Their food tour is one of the best that I have ever been to in my entire life. I've also left a link in the description below so you can find them just by going down there. Here in Malaga, they still say good afternoon when it is eight or nine o'clock at night. They're not saying good evening like we're used to in the States. They don't go to dinner here until 10 or 10.30. I went to this famous restaurant called El Pimpi, which is owned by Antonio Banderas. I saw a line out the front door at nine o'clock, at 10 o'clock, 10.45 at night. I saw different lines depending on what country those people were coming from. It wasn't until 10.30, 10.45 that the people from Malaga were actually headed out to go to dinner because they had been having tapa and cocktails with their friends at all of the bars along the way. Let's talk a little bit about what is not fish here in Malaga that is delicious to try. First of all, it is Spain. So you have to have jamón and that is the jamón de bolota or the black foot pig. That particular pig is wild. He eats acorns and the meat when it is dried is so fatty and so delicious. 
I promise when you're at any restaurant in Malaga or anywhere in Spain, when they have what is called a big plate or a small plate, you only need the small plate to share because it's ridiculously rich. Also, you can add the delicious cheese here. There's Manchego from the north. There's also local cheeses that are primarily made with goat and sheep because actually there are not a lot of cows in this area. And my understanding is, is that sheep and goat's milk cheeses are much better for our bodies anyway. So make sure to enjoy all of those cheese and cheeses, including payoyo, which is a local-ish cheese, manchego, and all the deliciousness. Something interesting to note is when the cheeses are aged and dry, they actually drizzle, drizzle olive oil over the top, which softens it a little bit, gives it an extra richness to it. Just ridiculously good. So it doesn't matter where you're going in Malaga, where you're going to get a drink. You could get a beer, a tinta de verano, or you can get a glass of wine. Expect to get their delicious olives or some kind of nuts or tapa along with your drink. There are really interesting stories about how tapa was created. Some say that it was to keep, back in the old days, to keep the flies out of your glass because the wines were sweet. Some say that everybody was drinking wine and not drinking any water, so to keep them from getting drunk all the time, they always offered a little bit of food with it. There are lots of other stories. Make sure to go online and look up the interesting stories on how tapa were created. Continuing on with non-seafood type dishes. One, churros. Churros are, are kind of like donuts, except here they're in a U shape or they're in a straight line. Again, gluten-free, can't have them. But what they do is they get a hot chocolate or a dipping chocolate and churros in the middle of the afternoon and just dip away. Just eat those, just ridiculously delicious if you weren't gluten-free. One of my favorite things to eat in the area are the Marcona almonds. We call them Marcona almonds back in the States, but here they're just almonds and they are salted and fried and they are so ridiculously good. Other things to eat in the area, they are famous for their figs here, both fresh and dried. If you go to the market, which I'll talk about in a minute, their dried figs are so delicious. They're also famous as well for avocados and mangoes here in this area. This part of Spain is actually a tropical climate, so they can grow mangoes and avocados here as well. So something that is quite famous in the area with a little twist is the Russian salad. That is a potato salad with typically tuna and a little bit of olive, a little savory, just delicious, and lots of lots of mayonnaise. Here, the difference is, is they take out the tuna and they put in a dried cod, which is called bacalao here in Spain. It is so yummy and it is so full of mayonnaise. You, you can get a small portion, a tapa style, or a big plate if you are sharing with a bunch of people. But here, instead of ensaladilla rusa or ensalada rusa, it is called ensalada malagueña. I actually think it's much better with that salted cod. Mm, Let's talk a little bit about costs here to eat while you're in Malaga. Well, breakfast, which is coffee and the tostada with the olive oil and tomato, I would say you'd expect to spend about three euros 50. If your hotel provides breakfast, that's fantastic, but most of the time you really don't need all that. You can just go to a little cafe and have a delicious breakfast and see everybody out and around. Speaking of coffee in the morning, there is a famous coffee shop called Cafe Central. Here they have their own styles of coffee based on how much milk you're going to have in it. Since I mentioned Cafe Central, a couple other restaurants and things that I recommend for you to do. One is Malizos. That restaurant was the best food that I have had on the Costa del Sol when I was here. I had two kinds of shrimp and the most beautiful marisco or seafood paella. Just remember when you're ordering paella, you can't do it by yourself because it's always ordered for two. It's per portion, but it is ordered for two. After Los Melitzos, you should try El Pimpi, which is a wonderfully beautiful restaurant that I mentioned before. You can also try Cafe Lola. There are several different locations, delicious tapas. You can try Pez Lola as well. I believe that's a sister restaurant of theirs. 
So if you don't wanna go to one of the restaurants or one of the tapas bars, you can go during the day, Tuesday through Saturday to the market. The Mercado here is quite famous, written up as one of the best markets in the entire world. And I have to say, it was divine. Everywhere you looked, fresh, delicious fish, fresh, delicious fruits. You had the dried figs there. You could get almonds there. You could actually, there were a couple of restaurants inside and around the Mercado that were served the fish that was inside. Yum, 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 yum. If you're gonna have an early lunch and not a 2.30, or if you wanna have two lunches and go before to get some snacks, then definitely go to the Mercado. So I hope that you enjoyed this video on the things that you need to try while you're in Malaga. Again, my number one suggestion is to go with Spain Food Sherpas and do their food tour the day you get in town. Well worth it. Thank you so much for watching. I am Kim, the Abundant Traveler, and I'll see you at some amazing Taberna here in Malaga very, very soon because like I said, I'm in love with this city. So see you soon here. The place to go is the Mercado Artesanas. Artesanas? Artesanas. Oh crap, I don't remember the name. Ding dong. Ding dong. Okay.